Put that cookie down now! Christmas, Christmas time is near. Time for toys and time for cheer. We've been good, but we can last. Hurry, Christmas, hurry fast. Wonder plane that loops the loop. Me, I want a hula hoop. We can understand the wait. Please, Christmas, don't be late. Ow! Son of a nutcracker! What's going on on my YouTube? It is, I'm Jacob, and welcome to day 26 of my 31 Days of Christmas series. And in today's video, I'll be taking a look at the third and most recent film. And what's crazy that this is now a trilogy now, this series of Netflix movies starring my recently admitted crush, Vanessa Legends is cute. There I said it. I kind of have a crush on Vanessa Legends. The Princess Switch 3. Romancing the Star. When a priceless relic is stolen, Queen Margaret and Princess Stacy enlist the help of Margaret's audacious look-alike cousin Fiona, again, who teams with a dashing, mysterious man from her past to retrieve it. Rekindling the sparks of a tantalizing Christmas romance, and resulting in a very unexpected switch. The Princess Switch 3 Romancing the Star just recently dropped on Netflix about a month ago now in 2021. This is the third film in the Princess Switch trilogy. And again, it's crazy that we have a trilogy of movies starring multiple Vanessa Hudgens, but here we are. If you've seen my previous reviews of the Princess Switch films, I acknowledge that they're ridiculous Netflix Christmas movies that are trying to be like knockoffs of the Hallmark Channel movies, but I have I actually do kind of enjoy them. Sometimes a little bit on a so bad it's good level, even with the cringe factor, some of the contrivances and ridiculousness of the storytellings. I do enjoy both of those films. A lot of it is due to Vanessa Hudgens really embracing the characters, the multiple characters that she plays in these movies, and I do like the filmmaking of the films. And there are some charming aspects of these movies that I have to give major props to. Now, Princess Switch 3, I was curious to see what would happen. The first movie, it was two Vanessa Hudgens. The sequel, it was three. Are they going to double it and do six Vanessa Hudgens? That's what I thought going into the Princess Switch 3. Nope, we're still on the three Vanessa Hudgens in this one. And this one, I would say, is the weakest of the three Princess Switch films. Not that it's a horrible movie or anything. There is still some enjoyable aspects to be had with this movie. Mainly Vanessa Hudgens. Vanessa Hudgens still owns all three of these characters. Margaret, Stacy, and especially Fiona. Fiona had some of the best laughs in this whole movie. News has arrived. Meow. Meow to you as well. Especially... Uh, some of the situations her character gets into, she ends up getting tangled in this heist story with this mysterious guy from her past. And some of the stuff she ends up doing in that, uh, I was like, mm, man, Vanessa, you're turning me on right now during some of these heist sequences. This is a G-rated Netflix movie. I don't know what you're doing, but woo! And I will say as far as storytelling goes, I think Fiona's journey in this movie there are some heartfelt moments related to that as the movie dives into her past, the complicated history with her mother, and why it made her the character she ended up becoming. And it's kind of a reflection upon her character, and there are some touching moments related to that. I wasn't expecting that because I enjoyed how over the top and bombastic and cartoonish that character was in the second movie, which is still my favorite of the three movies. But seeing the character grow in this trilogy it was actually kind of refreshing and i actually enjoyed that aspect of this movie now this movie definitely falls flat in a lot of regards even though it still has the christmas aesthetic that i love in the previous two films vanessa hudgens is still embracing every character 
which is always neat to see. But I think the charm that I liked in the first two movies is not as there in the third movie. I think it's because characters I liked in the previous two films kind of take a back seat in this one, even though we got Margaret and Stacy still in the film. They do take a back seat, and this feels more like a Fiona spinoff story than anything else, than your natural continuation of the Princess Switch story with Stacy being the front and center character of the movies. And I just thought that was a little disappointing. And even though there is a switch that does happen in this movie, it's more of, oh, we're all going to dress like Fiona to hide the scent because Fiona has to steal back this artifact. The other character has to dress up like her to fool our villainous character. And then the other Vanessa Hudgens has to dress like her for another instance. And it just got really weird and contrived once again, but still kind of enjoyable at the same time. And also it's really weird too, because the first two Princess Switch films were more based in your Hallmark-esque romantic comedies. And there are some rom-com elements still. And the Princess Switch 3, especially in the relationship with Fiona and the mysterious man from her past, and I think his name's Peter, I think, and that's starting to rekindle throughout the course of the movie. But the weird thing about this movie, especially, is the Princess Switch 3 is more of a genre change. It goes from rom-com to a heist movie, as the plot of the movie involves this priceless artifact that gets stolen and the three princesses team together to steal it back and return it. So, the movie almost has the vibes and beats of something like Ocean's Eleven, but in a Netflix Christmas movie. And I just thought that radical shift was extremely jarring. Now, I respect them for trying to do something different with the franchise, but you can't just go from one genre and change to a different genre in just one movie. It's just so bizarre. You gotta at least have to build up to something like that. Like how the Fast and Furious films went from these like street racing movies to heist movies midway into the franchise. The franchise kind of built itself up to the change in genre and tone. And that's why the Fast and Furious movies work for what they are. It's like taking a horror movie like Halloween and then make your next movie a musical. That's just not going to work because that's such a sudden shift in tone and it makes the experience very jarring. And that's how I felt watching The Princess Switch 3. I just thought it was so strange that we go from light, goofy rom-com to heist movie with a little rom-com element sprinkled in it. That was very strange. And also, speaking of the romance with Fiona and that mysterious Peter guy, I think's his name, that did not work for me at all. Like, I did not feel an ounce of chemistry in that relationship, and that's the biggest hollow aspect about The Princess Switch 3. I did not care for that relationship at all, and anything related to that story just rung hollow to me at the end of the day. This movie, I would say, is the weakest of the three Princess Switch films, but if you're already invested in the films, I think you'll still enjoy it for what it is. I just found like the sudden shift in genre very jarring and the magic of the other two films, the charm that the other two films had, I just didn't think worked as well by placing the focus on one of the three characters and the other characters taking a back seat. To me, this feels more like the Fiona spinoff movie than an actual Princess Switch 3, but the movie does kind of work for what it is. I'm kind of mixed on it personally at the end of the day. It's far from the worst Christmas movie in the world. If you just want a fun, breezy time with three Vanessa Hudgens and a bizarre change in tone from the other two movies, you might enjoy it. It might turn off some fans who enjoyed the rom-com elements of the first two. And I guess it all depends on how you watch movies and how you take these movies at face value. And if you just want an entertaining ride or you just want high caliber art. It all depends on you. If this works for you, that's great. If it doesn't, that's fine. For me, it's a middle-of-the-road movie. There's aspects that are enjoyable like the first two and others fall flat. It's the weakest film for sure, but it's far from the worst Christmas movie in the world. I'll be giving The Princess Switch 3 a 3 out of 5 stars. 
And on the 100 point scale, it's getting a 56 out of 100. So that wraps up my review of the Princess Switch 3 Romancing the Star as part of my 31 Days of Christmas series. I'll leave a link in the description below where you can check out all the other videos I've done in my 31 Days of Christmas series for my playlist, including my reviews of the previous two Princess Switch films. If you've seen The Princess Switch 3, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of the film. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you mixed on it? But whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button to see more content and the notification bell next to it so you can be notified of future videos. If this is your first video, besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. Hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!